Hi everyone, this is Ketchup here. As always, I'll try and keep this short and sweet, but something very special has come in the post, and I'm in a very good mood because of it. This next episode of Competitive History will be featuring Cyrax, and I'll put a little thing at the bottom so you can skip to it if you don't really care about this, but I want to thank a lot of people that have been tuning into our content and supporting it for as long as they have. For those that follow us and have done for a while, you'll know that we hit 100,000 subscribers at the end of last year, and this has just arrived in the post. Let me give it a bit of a rotate. The silver play button, the 100k subscriber milestone has been achieved and I never thought that the two of us would ever reach an audience this big that enjoys the content that we make, to be honest. I think being massive nerds of Mortal Kombat definitely has its advantages now. Um, and we're able to kind of share those passions with all of you, which has inspired so much of the video series that I now make that so many of you now tune into. I am very lucky to be doing what I do as a full-time occupation. Sorry about the lack of uploads. Obviously, I've been actually out in Ukraine for a major Mortal Kombat 11 tournament for the We Play Ultimate Fighting League. But now I'm back and recovered. I've been hard at work on this next episode episode, which is going to be Cyrax. A lot of people have been asking me about this character, and now's a good time to do it. It didn't feel right doing the voiceover for a Cyrax video, though, as a Sector player, but it's a good thing that I just so happen to have a twin brother who was a god of Cyrax and can do the voiceover for me. So thank you all so much. Much love for all of your continued support. Here is to many years of more content to come. Mustard, mate, take it away. Cyrax has had one of the more interesting journeys in competitive Mortal Kombat. Since the very beginning, in fact, with a combination of combo potential, setups, mobility, damage, he's got a little bit of everything and has been that way for almost every game he's made a playable appearance in. For better or worse in some cases, as Cyrax was very much incredible in Sun games and bottom tier in others. Very few cases of the in-between. His depth and variety goes a lot further than you might think. Welcome to a competitive history of Cyrax. Cyrax. Now, you might think we're starting off with Ultimate MK3, as that's often where MK3 characters begin in a lot of cases. But with Cyrax, it's vital that we go a few months before it to vanilla Mortal Kombat 3, because Cyrax was a very different beast due to the game's mechanical differences. Special move-wise, it all began here. The net is a large projectile that stuns the opponent for a full combo. Cyrax has two different bomb directions, where the bombs are unblockable and launch, but they have quite a long fuse time. Air grab is a double input where you take off into the air if they're airborne, and press grab at close range will end the combo in an actual throw. Cyrax has teleport as well, but it's not super amazing in these games, as it sports pretty long recovery. However, there wasn't much to compare it to in vanilla as many teleport characters weren't in the game yet, so it's a nice option anyway. Cyrax has a high damage combo string right here, but in MK3 you couldn't get combo strings from jumping attacks, so that was definitely a hit on the net's damage by itself. He had this combo string, which wasn't all that useful for the most part, as it basically just did less damage, and a 3 hit from his kickstarter. Again, not that impressive, but it's better than Sector's 2 hit. The main reason I've covered vanilla MK3 was for two major factors. The first is that in the very first playable version of Mortal Kombat 3, Revision 1, Cyrax had a bomb infinite. There were basically no restrictions about using bombs mid-combo, so a standard bomb launch into another bomb, high punch, jump kick, repeat, was a true infinite that gave Cyrax a touch of death off any bomb that landed. You might say, yeah, well, the fuse is so long, I'm never going to get hit by that. But the main reason I say Revision 1 is because in this version, you could use bombs after a net connected. This sets it up completely guaranteed and lets Cyrax win the round of one single touch. This would be addressed in later revisions and wouldn't last as long as you might expect. But something else that always existed in vanilla was a corner touch of death as well. And this one comes from Cyrax's normal throw. Cyrax's throw launches the opponent into the air. He gets to combo off this against basically everyone, although the combo will change depending on the opponent's hurtbox. But the important thing in vanilla is that if he throws you into the corner, he can do combos like the ones you're seeing in front of you right now that do easily roughly 70% damage. Most of the time, more. The only reason this works is because the roundhouse in the corner didn't cause the end of combo knockback that Ultimate had with Roundhouse being a major corner tool in combos for many characters. 
Cyrax could use it to throw you once and win the round from it. Funny really how Cyrax's legacy as a touch of death character truly does stem from his very first appearance. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 is more of a true representation of this character competitively in the MK3s. The game has the extra characters, the quality of life changes that made it more polished and refined, and with it came some heavy hits to Cyrax that made him one of the worst characters in the game. The first thing that was changed is that roundhouses now push back and stop combos from being the way they were in vanilla MK3. Obviously, you can still use a roundhouse to end combos for high damage at the right heights, but the whole roundhouse into net trick didn't work anymore, so that is an immediate change right there that cuts his threat. At this point, bombs have way more limitations, most of which were introduced in the later revisions of vanilla MK3, but they stayed in ultimate so the combo potential of a bomb is strictly right place, right time. This character could still knock you into one or two bombs into huge damage, it's just way less practical to set up now. Jump kicks can link into combo strings now thanks to the universal change in UMK3. So Cyrax could at least land a net into neutral jump kick and do a full combo string into nice damage for little effort. I didn't touch on Cyrax's grab game at all in vanilla because it's more vital to use an ultimate due to his cut toolset. His grab opens up for a weird side switch situation because remember, to avoid being grabbed, you need to hold back. A couple of mix ups here into full combo cash out can be impressive damage. You can jump out of this though, but Cyrax can read that and punish accordingly anyway. So it's nice that Cyrax is one of the characters with a true grab game attached in such an old title. A common misconception is that Cyrax had more damage than Sector in Ultimate, and that's actually not quite true. If you put their dialer combos side by side, Cyrax has more, but Sector could relaunch most of the cast with his 3 hit launcher. All it takes is 2 relaunches and he's basically got even more damage than Cyrax gets for his biggest combo string, with Cyrax having no combo strings that launch at all. His launches come from bombs, which are really, really hard to hit against most characters. The difficult matchups and long list of top or high tier characters were introduced in Ultimate. Characters Cyrax struggled to compete with. His damage off a Kickstarter was low. His bombs were easy to avoid. His crazy touch of deaths in a practical sense were removed at this point, and he was not only the weakest cyborg, but one of the absolute worst characters in Ultimate MK3. His air grab was basically one of his strongest tools because of punish possibilities, on top of the fact that the robots in general are much easier to relaunch than other characters, so his vulnerability goes way up. The funny thing about MK Gold is that Sector is such a hilariously broken god tier that Cyrax often doesn't get his time to shine. He was actually another really high tier character, just not the insane god tier of a Sector or Goro. Cyrax has all of his moves in gold once again, so bombs, nets, teleports, air grabs, it's all here, but how they function is a little bit different in the MK4 system. The most vital tool that Cyrax had in this game was his mobility. His teleport, and especially air grab, was just all kinds of obnoxious. It gave him some of the greatest mobility in the entire game, and it was so hard to pin him down if he left the ground. You combine this mobility and slippery playstyle with the already existing bombs and stuff, crazy good character. His weapon was the Pulse Blade. It's not something you go to as a crazy main tool like Reptile's Axe, which gives an infinite like Ketchup mentioned in the last big episode, and it doesn't have a crazy amount of moves either, but it's basically very similar to Liu Kang's sword, which is good, so this is good too. Cyrax had some differences to Sector button-wise. For instance, he had a different high kick animation which actually helped him, as this high kick in particular is a really good tool for linking launching combos into big damage if you time it right. Cyrax was one of the many examples as to why MK Gold was a pretty broken game compared to regular MK4. Most of the new characters had these crazy ridiculous tools that let them do things that other characters struggled to do quite easily. And in this case, Cyrax and his mobility is one of the biggest examples of that. He is a very, very good character, and one of the many times where the new MK Gold characters kinda messed with the fundamental game. 
Competitively, MK Gold is not seen as respected as MK4 because of the new characters and other game changes that just totally mess with the balance in not a very good way. Deadly Alliance was the first PS2 age 3D game to feature a robot, and that robot was Cyrax. One of the harder characters to unlock as he required some of the rarer currency and a decent amount of it, but once you unlocked him, your reward was basically the worst character in the game. Unfortunately, this version of Cyrax wasn't fully realized. He looked the part, sounded good, had a wicked cool fatality, which, you know, just saying, by the way, is my personal favorite fatality of all time. But gameplay wise, this character was not able to hang at all with the rest of the cast. He lacked one major factor, damage. I'll explain that in greater detail later, but for now, here's what we're working with in terms of key buttons. Cyrax has more specials than a few characters here, but the moves he has aren't really that good across the board. There is no net whatsoever, but he does have the bombs close and far once again. They explode after a set time and he can combo from them and they are unblockable. But they have a long startup. This buzzsaw attack is new, but it's crap. Ignore it. Finally, there's a spinning kick that does great damage but is ridiculously unsafe on block. We have to go over his stances now, and again, there are use in both, but pretty much no substantial reward. Not anything like the recent reptile episode ketchup did where a bunch of buttons are usable. Ninjutsu is the first one, and it's super simple. 1-1 one, one is a good string and it's fast recovering, on top of leading to multiple enders, your main ones being 1-1-2 one, one, and 1-1-up-2. One, one, Although 1-1-3 one, one, and 1-1-1 one, one, one exist as well, it's not crazy important here, but it will be two games later. Down 1 is a fast poke. Down 4 is a poke with more range than you'd think. Back 1 is a launcher that can be an ender to 1-1. One, one. But a lot of his moves in ninjutsu are a bit counterproductive to his game plan. His launches lead to very little. Lots of his attacks end combos super fast. It's just not very good. Sambo is arguably your best stance of the two in DA, as it does have a single throw style attack that actually does decent damage for what it is. He also has larger strings like 1-1, one, one, back 2, forward 2, up 2. The back 2 forward 2 can be comboed by itself as well if you want, and it has a stance change ender that launches for follow ups. The down 4 and down 3 aren't awful low pokes, and it's nice having some slightly larger options up close than the usual 3 hits that Ninjutsu gives you. Finally, his pulse blade, which is the weapon stance. It's actually not terrible in neutral, but everything is a single hit. For starters, his step blocking with weapon is really good, he gets nice mobility through that alone although a lot of his buttons you won't use. Back 3 is a fast and sneaky low, and up 1 reaches far and hits mid, so there's already a mix up there. Back 2 launches, although your follow ups aren't really that good for damage, but there's a low damage mix up between back 3 and up 1 that could be annoying to defend against. Now with Cyrax, the extreme lack of damage is where the bulk of your issues come from here. If you play most of the cast and do larger combo strings that involve stance change or something, you're actually getting some decent damage by itself. Cyrax, however, from his basic built-in combos, barely tickles you in these cases. There's an unreasonable amount of scaling in them and he just doesn't hurt at all. This means that when he tries to enforce any kind of mix-up on you with lows or mids, none of it is actually doing any damage against a bunch of the cast who, when they hit you, will be chunking life bars at an alarming rate. Deadly Alliance didn't have combo breakers either, remember. There is, however, in true Cyrax fashion, a way to set up a free bomb for two combos in one. I had discovered this from Czech's combo videos from many years back, because the 1-1 one, one, back 1 stance change in Ninjutsu has a very long knockdown. You can do that string into close bomb and then do an instant jump attack which lets you turn around instantly. The opponent is locked into a turning around animation and the bomb detonates. Even with this reset setup though, he's only doing regular damage that other characters can get, which is a huge bummer. Additionally, the unique moves he gets from all stances do not help him. Remembering Ketchup's reptile history where he mentioned he has a plus on hit shove in one stance and a parry that gives you a full combo in the other? Cyrax has a really not good backflip in Ninjutsu and a taunt into a small heel in Sambo, but he hasn't got anything at range to make the heel something you get all that much. 
His weapon ability is an impale which causes damage over time, but using impale takes your weapon away, which is counterproductive because the weapon gives you longer range and rather safe mix-ups, right? So why would you want to throw away a neutral tool when he already struggles there more than most characters? If Cyrax just did normal damage, he wouldn't be as dreadful as he is in Deadly Alliance. But honestly, you just need to play the game against a good opponent using a high damage character to know that Cyrax has to work way too hard for no reason whatsoever. In most Deadly Alliance tier lists, Cyrax is sitting right at the bottom. Cyrax. I talked about some of Cyrax's stuff getting a little more impressive a couple of games later, and that lies in Armageddon. A game that very much improved the Cyrax moveset, but in ways you wouldn't expect if you only played this game casually. He's much more complete and his old issues are not as apparent. Let's dive into why. First of all, there's no Sambo for him in MKA, but he still has Ninjutsu which has all the same moves that I mentioned before. They just function a lot better in Armageddon. For starters, he actually has decent combos in this one. If you launch with back 1 into 1-1 one one in Deadly Alliance, they would just fall out of the combo. But in this game, the launch stays up high, which lets you walk up and do another 1-1 one one into the ender of your choice. This is actually really important, and I'll say why in a minute. He doesn't have free bomb drops though, because the wake up system is different. He's given back his teleport in Armageddon, which he didn't have in Deadly Alliance, which naturally helps him because it's better to have a teleport than to not at the end of the day. Pulse Blade is way more lethal in this one. He's given new moves, one of which is Standing 4, which does about 22% by itself. It goes really far, is basically safe, and can easily be parry cancelled for more range. The other is 2-1, a two-hit string that again is safe on block, does great damage by itself, and is just another reliable option at range you used to struggle with in the previous game. Down 1 is also safe by the way, so this poke right here is excellent. It's probably about time why I mentioned the 1-1 combo ender is so important now. Armageddon is a game where if you can guarantee unblockable throws, you already have a nice tool handy. Cyrax has some of the most plentiful ways to do that of any character in Armageddon's roster. Hand to hands 1-1 by itself guarantees a throw on hit. This is great. 1-1 up 2 against the wall also guarantees a free throw. Also great. Here's where we get weird though. Your hand-to-hand 1-1-2 -one -one is really plus on hit, but it doesn't guarantee a free throw. The opponent can jump out of a throw. However, if you meaty 1-1 -one -one as they jump, it will juggle, looping into at least another 1-1, -one -one, and there's pretty much zero combo scaling here. The damage you take trying to jump out when a two-hit string connects to challenge you, which remember is safe on block, is insanely high. Cyrax is bagging at least half your life because you try to jump out of a grab. But the 1-1 one, one up to Ender puts you right back into that situation again. So against players in the know, 1-1-2 one, one, might as well give a free throw, as it makes his damage output consistently high, and every ounce of it comes from 1-1 one, one that is fast, safe, and gives a really solid game plan. Cyrax isn't super busted or god tier, but he's not bad at all in Armageddon. In fact, he's solid leagues better than his Deadly Alliance appearance, and actually has a game plan this time. He's a bit trickier to play in the game's built-in online component because his free situations are harder to enforce, but playing in the offline mode where moves function as they should, he's got a simple but safe approach that can really catch you out if you don't know the matchup. Cyrax. Now, here is where arguably the most well-known and infamous iteration of Cyrax came to be. Mortal Kombat 9 Cyrax was a powerhouse of a character, and at every point of the game's mainstream lifespan, and even to this day, was one of the strongest characters in the entire game for a multitude of reasons, and his overall utility was quite crazy. Cyrax had a ton of good buttons and strings. His down 1, down 3, and down 4 were all good for their speed, recovery, and range, especially by MK9 standards. His standing 1 was fast and led to a hit confirmable and safe 1-2-1. One, one. His standing 2, despite being listed as a high, actually hit mid near enough every time versus a number of characters, and some of the time versus others, depending on what part of their breathing animation they were at. Yes, that was a thing. And again, led to a safe confirmable string in 2-1-2 that had immense knockdown frames. 
Standing 3 was a fast mid that led to 334, which is plus on block. The string hit mid high high and only jailed if the opponent blocked the first hit while standing. Therefore, you could use Buzzsaw after standing 3 to deter people from crouching every time, and once respected, allowed you to go for the full string. Forward 2 is a mid that knocks away on hit, but on block was double digit plus frames, allowing you to set up just about anything you wanted into a lot of chip damage. Back 2 is a meterless launcher used in most Cyrax combos, giving a set launch gravity and was amazing for setting up important follow-ups. Also, Cyrax is unique in MK9, in the fact that he is the only character in the game with a normal button grab. Back 1 is a techable grab that leads to a ton of hit advantage, particularly useful as Cyrax has access to even more plus frames on the back of it. Looking at his specials next, he covers a lot of bases. All the classic moves return and then some. Net was a fast and large projectile that stunned meterlessly and kept opponents suspended mid-air if airborne and stuck standing if on the ground. If a second net was used after hitting the first, the second net would restand. In a game with powerful wake-up attacks, this was really useful. Net could be enhanced to drain an entire bar of opponent's meter, which, as we'll talk about soon, was terrifying. Anti-air is a fast air grab that hits opponents who are in the air, as you would expect. This could be enhanced for more damage. Reverse Kick is a safe on block special that repositions stand alone and can be extended via a grab at the end to keep the same side. This is a good damage ender and when enhanced hits as a low. Teleport returned and for the first time could be used as an attack if enhanced. Though this move's main use was for capitalizing on long range nets and a large reason as to why Cyrax would trade so well at range, you would hit a net, teleport, and then do crazy damage. Buzzsaw would also see a return, and by default would hit overhead with a good knockdown. This move came out quickly and had chunky pushback on block, which against a lot of the cast made it a good counter poke after pokes and as a basic mix up when paired with the enhanced reverse kick. The Enhanced Saw fired the blade as a projectile, which stayed in overhead as well. Last but certainly not least, it's time to talk about the bombs. These are the main reason Cyrax has always been capable of frankly unreasonable damage output in MK9. They can be fired at three ranges, have a set timer, and are completely unblockable. Yes, unblockable, just like in every other MK up to this point. However, in MK9, the unblockable bombs, when paired with his MK9 toolkit and overall meta, completely pushed him over the edge. You could also enhance the bomb to fire it as a projectile that would launch on hit. Bombs are what allowed Cyrax to shine and allowed him to break the rules in a number of ways. First off, and most memorably, the unavoidable reset combos that give Cyrax even to this day some of, if not the highest, practical damage output in a Netherrealm Studios fighting game. The resets worked as follows. You hit the opponent, confirm into net, launch them, and time it so your second net, which remember will cause a restand animation that technically ends the combo, connects right as another bomb is about to explode underneath them. The bomb is unblockable and unbreakable, making it guaranteed despite the previous combo technically ending. This resets the scaling completely and allows Cyrax to delete entire health bars off almost any touch. The damage Cyrax could obtain would range from over 70% for a bar to even true 100% damage combos with enough meter and screen space to work with. These resets were totally allowed in the competitive space and not banned or restricted in any way, meaning that if you're fighting Cyrax, you knew these resets were something you had to constantly be keeping in mind, as one bad breaker used early could spell disaster for you later especially as Cyrax could drain your bar first with enhanced net and then go for these combos, leaving you in a situation where one break could mean all three bars gone. 100% combos weren't the only thing that the bombs allowed Cyrax to do either. You could also use them to combo off a breaker if you used one right as a bomb exploded behind the opponent which in turn gave Cyrax crazy unbreakable damage as well, as there existed certain setups that allowed Cyrax to combo you whether you broke or not, as if you did break, you'd get launched, and if you chose not to, you'd simply fall onto the bomb anyway as a normal combo, 
Rather disgusting indeed. Cyrax was one of the most powerful characters in MK9 and sat firmly in the top tier and still does to this day. He is a character that deleted like no other and has no shortage of ways to obtain said damage due to his plus frames and overall utility. The only thing that really kept him from the number one spot is the existence of Cabal, who, believe it or not, is generally seen to be even wilder. And even then, Cyrax is still a complete animal of a character. Now we can't talk about MK9 Cyrax without bringing up his alternate costume, i.e. Human Cyrax. In contrast to Human Sector, who was pretty much the exact same character with one small difference mechanically, Human Cyrax had a number of differences that made a much bigger difference to his gameplay. For a start, his bombs have more recovery than usual bombs, making them less rapid in neutral and stopping Human Cyrax from going for a number of the typical Cyrax combos slash resets. He still had them and they did a ton of damage, they were just done in a slightly different way and typically didn't lead to as much damage. He had a new animation for throwing the net that made him slightly crouch down. This was useful for one main reason, going under instant air projectiles with net in an attempt to trade better. Not universally helpful, but good in certain matchups where that can be a problem. Arguably the most useful difference was Human Cyrax's teleport. This was much better for Human as the enhanced version recovered way faster, making it way better on block and easier to follow up on hit. Note that I call these differences, not improvements. It was generally considered that Robot Cyrax was better than Human due to the bomb differences primarily, as they were such a core part of what makes Cyrax what he is in MK9. That said, Human Cyrax is still super strong and worth playing if you want to. Triborg. Now we move on to the most recent official appearance of Cyrax in a competitive MK. MKXL saw Cyrax return as a variation for Triborg, which, let's be honest, is basically a full Cyrax. Triborg is one of the most changed characters in the game depending on variation, as Ketchup has already said at length in his Sector and Cyber Sub histories. And Cyrax is no different, and despite being only one variation, has everything here that Cyrax players know and love. Competitively speaking, Cyrax is a one-trick pony in MKX, built to do one thing well, and that one thing only, and that is mix. Get a hit, turn it into a setup, and put your opponent in a blender until one of you is done. And Cyrax does it better than pretty much anyone in this game, but not without some shortcomings to make up for it. We'll keep things to the specific Triborg moves that were relevant to Cyrax. Your usual 1-1-1 or forward 1-3 for fast high confirms like all the others. Alongside the base overhead and low game of back 1 or back 3, Cyrax would get a lot of use out of the full back 3 string when paired with other moves as we'll get to in a second. Forward 3 was also a great normal for Cyrax as when paired with bombs gave him some decent neutral options as well as just closing the distance. Back 2 was similar to MK9 as a launcher that hits overhead. Forward 2 had a Cyrax extension, turning the mid into a low second hit and a safe ender. Back 1 had an additional overhead extension. And a unique 2-1-2 that fired a bomb at the end for a good knockdown or to be plus on block, although the third hit could be easily avoided. Forward 4 could be used as well and had a high damage reward on hit due to having a launching air special that worked on hit and wouldn't come out on block. This lets you do forward 4-3 into special every time and on hit you get the launcher and on block you just get the string. However, the second hit can be ducked and punished, making Cyrax need to do things like forward 4 saw or forward 4 EX saw to stay safe. Once again, the specials are where Cyrax really shines in MKX. Though there are a number of restrictions in place to stop him going to the levels of crazy that was seen in MK9, so we'll list them off individually. Net is back again, and once more serves as a combo tool and to win trades, leaving standing on the ground and capturing in the air. However, instead of a second net coming out after one is used in a combo, the second net will simply misfire and nothing comes out at all. EX again will drain bar, only this time it's half a bar and not a full one. Worth noting as well that in MKX the net will also misfire if it's used in a combo that has had a bomb explode in it stopping Cyrax from going too wild meterlessly if a bomb starts a combo or is used before the net. 
Buzzsaw is a mid and safe on block. The main go-to counter poke special and general options to be safe with pushback for no meter cost. This also grants a hard knockdown, which is very important for Cyrax in this game. EX Saw fires as a projectile and launches whilst being safe on block. Your typical go-to tool for making your overhead or low game safe and rewarding. The EX Saw launch is a great hard knockdown if you choose not to combo from it, allowing for some tricky stuff that we'll show soon. Teleport works as you'd expect, but in MKX you can choose which side you reappear on. Additionally in MKX, the teleport is Cyrax's armored reversal, and by MKX standards, it's not particularly a strong one when used in the typical fashion that reversals are needed. It's quite low damage and hits twice, so if both hits don't connect, which happens more than you'd think, you don't get much damage for it whatsoever. However, it does have its uses, and having any armor is better than having no armor. Air Grab is also back, and Cyrax's main go-to EX launcher off of forward 131 versus some characters and forward 43, as both lead to great damage before you start your mix-ups. Additionally, this is also a great confirm off a jump kick to continue your offense. Air Grab is also another hard knockdown. And again, here we are. It's time to talk about the bombs again. Once more, they're a huge part of the Cyrax game plan, and in MKX, not only do you have the three usual ranges of ground bomb, you also have three ranges of smart bombs, i.e. bombs that float in the air instead of rolling on the floor. In this game, the ground bombs hit as lows, and the smart bombs float as highs. Both types can be EX to detonate on impact in addition to the usual timer. The low hitting bombs really are where Cyrax's mix ups and general blender style stem from. Cyrax has a ton of overhead options that, when timed right, would create what the community called hard to blockables, requiring the opponent to block overhead to low or vice versa very quickly, and failure to do so would result in another launch that could get looped back into the same situation again on knockdown. For example, ground bomb into back 3 down 4 for low low instant overhead low, ground bomb into back 1 2 plus 4 at various timings for double overhead low. And that was another thing, a lot of these Cyrax overhead low setups could have their timings altered to hit differently or at least hit at a different time, making it a nightmare for the defender. You'd fake people out with extended overhead low blocks just to do a back one or back three by itself into nothing because they expect a follow-up that never happens. It really let you prey on the opponent's discomfort and you'd get a feel for how much they knew about how to deal with these options and you'd just adjust your timings from there. The overhead low setups were just the beginning. Over time, Cyrax players would find all sorts of wacky and wonderful setups using things like an empty air net into a well-timed neutral jump or jump kick, using the EX Saw knockdown to set up a bomb and run under them to hit an overhead on the other side whilst also reversing their wake up, shout outs to Scars Unseen, and then the very effective method of, hey, your opponent can actually block these setups? Ha, I'm just going to throw you onto the bomb instead for the same situation again. Cyrax is a character with a lot of gimmicks and setups that on paper shouldn't necessarily work. However, he has enough that are and do that you can really get creative and throw everything you have, including the kitchen sink at them, until the game is over. Now we can talk for hours, literally, about every little possible setup that Cyrax has and the mix-ups he's capable of in MKX, but when we're talking competitive, we have to talk about weaknesses too, and unfortunately, Cyrax did have some that held him back in comparison to his top-tier counterparts in Sector and Smoke. Cyrax is built to blend, and because of that, he lacks certain neutral tools that you really need in MKX. For example, he has arguably the worst mid-game of any of the Triborgs because he has to constantly spend bar on EX Saw or Bomb to stay safe or deter button presses or accept tiny payout by using just Meterless Saw. In addition to getting basically nothing from Triborg's otherwise scary plus frames game, there were also many characters that straight up didn't have to play his game at all, and that's where his biggest issue stemmed from. Matchups. A lot of the stronger characters had tools that just made it incredibly difficult to ever let Cyrax land that all-important hit. Grandmaster Clone, Crystalline Tremors armor, generally characters who built me to crazy fast like Piercing Melina to name a few. Cyrax mix-ups are super powerful, but they are not guaranteed, and some of the more common setups are actually unsafe on block if blocked correctly, which at a high level of play made Cyrax a very all-in character. 
That being said, Cyrax is still capable and very strong. His placement in-game varies from player to player. I've always personally placed him as a high mid-tier character, mainly due to his problematic matchups, which hold him back, especially being characters that are quite common competitively. But he's one of the more dangerous characters to fight in short sets, and can definitely do his thing and mix his way to a win with offense and aggression. I've always felt Cyrax was one of the most creative characters by far in MKX, arguably Netherrealm history. And you can tell that by the fact that every Cyrax player out there uses him differently. For the most part, every player has their own tricks that they prioritize, and to this day, MKX Cyrax is actually my personal favorite iteration of the character to play, and that's saying a lot. There's just something about the sheer amount of crazy you can lay on whilst at the same time, freedom to change based on how your opponent figures things out. Every time I go back and play him, there's something new to try, even if it's a new, slightly different looking B&B. MKX Cyrax is a lab monster's best friend and a character that any combo fanatic should try out. And that, my friends, is a complete competitive history of Cyrax. Thank you so much, Mustard, for the voiceover and definitely helping me in recording and voicing and putting together the script in general. Cyrax is a very complicated character across the years and definitely a fan favorite for good reason. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you stick around, like, comment, and subscribe for more content to come. As always, let me know what character you'd like next, and I'll see you next time. Take care.